Hello, everyone. So very welcome to Orange Fab Online Taipei Demo Day. Orange Fab Asia whole team are uh, very pleased to meet you all here. Uh, thank you for your participation and the beginnings of this event. To introduce the Orange Fab with uh, the latest news to our new friends, so we prepare the video. Please enjoy the video about Orange and the Orange Fab. Bruno, can you play yeah, the video? I will play yeah. the video. About the Orange and the Orange Fab Asia. Orange Fab Asia is an accelerator program for startup. Orange is one of the largest tech operators in Europe, with around 270 million customers. Orange has consumer customers in 26 countries, mainly in Europe and Middle East Africa. Orange also provides B2B services in most of countries and territories in the world. Orange commits to support startups to accelerate open innovation. One of the key initiatives for open innovation is the accelerator program, Orange Fab. We have the program in 18 countries around the world, including three in Asia. Orange Fab Asia has a program in three countries, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. We focus on supporting startups based in Asia to go global market, utilizing the global network of Orange. We provide mentoring, connecting with relevant business units of Orange and our corporate partners. And we organize events like Demo Day and also support to participate in events around the world. We started the program in Asia in 2013. Since then, we have run 13 seasons of the three-month program in which 204 startups have joined. We are proud to have three IPOs and four acquisitions of our startups. And over 700 million US dollars are fundraised in total by our startups. A lot of mentors based in Asia Europe and US give advice to our startups. Let me introduce some cases about how Orange supports our startups. Orange sells startups products such as the Braille smartwatch by Dot and Group Talk earphone device Bonks at its online and offline shops. Orange also distributes startups products to business customers. For example, Orange distributes 4D replay 360 degree video solution for large events in France. Another example of our support is for Melip air tech support startups. We installed their service into Orange Gardens, our office in Paris, so that they can demonstrate their service for potential customers in France and Europe from which it acquired many customers in France. Not only for Orange, we have a lot of corporate partners. We introduce our startups to the global corporations for them to grab the opportunities to go global market. Many startups are, are taking advantage of the network to grow their business. Demo Day is one of our key activities in the program. We hold the event every season, twice a year, in each of Tokyo, Seoul, and Taipei. The startups from the three countries participate in the Demo Days in the three cities. We also provide many opportunities to exhibit at large conferences globally. VivaTech is held in Paris every year. We have brought more than 10 startups each year from Asia since its first event in 2016. 
taking advantage of the opportunity to visit Paris for VivaTech. Orange Fab organizes pitch session to introduce Orange Fab global network startups to our colleagues in France. We invite startups to other events which Orange sponsors, such as Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Two Asian startups were invited in 2019. Partnering with J Startup and Jetro, Melib from Orange Fab Tokyo exhibited at Web Summit in 2019 as well. Another event in Paris, Change Now, which focuses on social impact solution, received two Asian startups with our support. Not only for Europe, we have the startups to expand their business to Asian market. From 2015, we sponsor InnoFest Unbound in Singapore every year to let our startups to showcase to the large audiences. We collaborate with our group company, Orange Business Services, to have our startups display at World Cities Summit in Singapore. Our colleagues in Beijing organize this China tour to visit four cities in China. Our startups participate in the tour every year. Our startups also participate in JSC CSR forum in Shenzhen. Orange Fab Asia organizes Australia tour as well for our startups to seek opportunities to go into Australian market. Africa is a very important market for Orange. Even though it's a bit far from Asia, we are trying to help the startups to enter African market. Last year, we presented two startups at the Dakar Digital Show. We also have Orange Fab global network startups who are accelerated in other countries than Asia. In 2018, we supported eight startups from around the world to participate in the startup festival in Busan, Korea. In other countries than Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, Orange Fab Asia holds a pitch competition to expand our coverage for open innovation in Asia. We have held our pitch events in Singapore, Australia, and Vietnam so far. That's all. If you are interested in our accelerator program, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the video about Orange and Orange Fab Asia. Okay. All right. So. Let me introduce myself. I'm Claire, Claire Fine, in charge of Orange Fab Asia Taipei program. Next, I would like to also introduce my colleagues as well in Asia. So thanks to them, the great team who made a great effort uh, to jointly organize this event together with me. So let me introduce you. The first one is my colleague from Japan, Mr. Hiroshi Nishikawa. Hi, Hiroshi. Hello, Claire. Thank you for your introduction. Hello, Hiroshi. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm Hiroshi Nishikawa, uh, based in Japan. I'm running uh, Orange Fab Asia Tokyo program. And uh, thank you for everyone uh, watching this event today. Thank you. Thank you, Hiroshi. And next uh, is my colleagues from South Korea, Mr. Denny Han. Hi, Denny. Hello, my name is Denny Sang Yong Han. I'm working in Orange Fab uh, Seoul, and I'm in charge of uh, Korean market uh, to recruit the uh, startup in the local ecosystem. And, uh, in the Asian countries, we are supposed to have like a monthly uh, demo day, uh, country by country. So uh, we'll have our demo day in Seoul in December by online or hybrid, little bit offline plus online. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. And then next, I also would like to introduce my colleague uh, from Fab Taipei as well. Hi, Bruno. Mr. Bruno. Hi. Thanks. Yeah, hello, nice to meet you, Bruno, everyone. Can you, can you turn on your camera? Yes, yeah, on. Our audience here. It's on, right? Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, nice to meet everyone here. So I just arrived in September. Yeah, 
inside Orange Fab Taipei, and okay, I'm so the new colleague of Claire. Thank you, thank you, Bruno. Okay, so today we're gonna have a total seven stop to pitch at this event. So we will invite them to introduce for their self introduction first, and then we will play back their pitch video. After that, we will have uh, three minutes reserved for each stop for their Q&A section, okay? We very welcome all of our audience to ask the stop questions. So you can type your questions on hoping chat. As you could see the chat window on the right hand side of your screen, all right? So you can type your question in using hoping chat window. And then after that, our colleagues will receive the question and ask the startup questions directly. All right. Without further ado, please join me to welcome the first stop. Stop. Okay. The first stop is a hot covers from Tokyo. Hi, Adrian. Hello, everyone. This is Adrian from uh, Hackers. Thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to answering any question and, and exploring opportunities with you. Yeah, pleasure. Okay, so Bruno, please help. Is the leading provider of explainable and lightweight AI solutions. We enable humans to make better, faster, and more reliable decisions based on AI-driven insights. As a specialist in time series and image data, our proprietary sparse modeling technology is resource efficient, compatible with small data sets, and provides explainability, putting the human user in focus. Today, we offer a portfolio of products and services including our data science consulting and training services and dedicated solution platforms for computer vision, medical and life science, as well as edge AI applications. Through our data science consulting practice, we provide clients with a dedicated expert team capable to perform all functions and ensuring successful outcome, ranging from data collection, data analysis, annotation, and even prototype development all within the same package. To learn more and join satisfied customers from the medical, pharmaceutical, and energy fields, visit hakarus.com slash consulting. SpectroCore is a visual inspection tool ready to be embedded into manufacturing machines and helps improve production yields, enables higher processing accuracy, as well as reduces failure rates by detecting defects missing parts and misalignments for a wide range of materials and surfaces. Thanks to its lightweight design, SpectroCore is ready for integration with machinery such as laser cutters, drilling machines, welding machines, and industrial and assembly line robots without the need for any additional hardware. To learn more and tap into the power of AI-enabled visual inspections, visit hackerus.com. Coligo is Hakaru's Edge AI platform, which provides customers with a wide range of applications and services for tailor-made development, including implementations for IoT, FPGA, and other Edge devices. Coligo supports time series and image data for use cases such as super resolution, data reconstruction, and anomaly detection. Coligo utilizes Hackerus sparse modeling-based technology and is able to perform both training and inference directly on the Edge device. No need for external connectivity. To learn more, visit hackerus.com slash Coligo. Salus is Hackerus AI platform for medical and life science solutions. Using Salus, we create precise and complex tools that aid doctors, caregivers and researchers to provide better, faster and safer treatments, all based on data-driven insights. Salus is today used in areas such as predictive ECG analysis, smarter animal health and brain stroke diagnostics. 
Solus is also compatible with the life science field for things such as genome analysis, regenerative medicine, and AI-assisted drug discovery. To learn more, visit hackerus.com slash salus. While originally from Japan, our global team is now supporting clients and partners across the world. We help our customers with things such as diagnostic support in the medical field and factory automation in the industrial space. To learn more about how Hackerus can help you achieve your AI goals, visit our homepage, hackerus.com. Hello and konnichiwa. My name is Adrian Sosna and I lead Kyoto-based Hackerus global sales activities. Thank you for taking the time to see our product introduction videos. With these clips, I wanted to introduce you to some of our AI capabilities. And if you're interested in learning more about explainable AI, now we can help you for projects from edge to cloud deployments across the manufacturing, industrial, and medical domains. Please feel to reach out to me here or by email to adrian at hackerist.com. I look forward to connecting with you. Okay, and excellent advanced solution. Thank you. So we'd like to manage the questions either from the audience or from our colleagues. So Daniel Hiroshi, do we have a question to ask? Yeah, maybe there are no questions from audience. So uh, let me ask some questions. Okay. So uh, uh, you have several different types of products. Could you explain about your pricing model? How do you decide the price of each services? Mm, absolutely. Thank you for your question. So um, Hacker's core competency is around data science and more exactly the proprietary AI engine that we built. And then we apply our algorithms to various problems, be it in the medical domain to help with cancer diagnostics or in the manufacturing domain to help with defect and error handling in semiconductor industry. So it varies quite a bit how we approach a customer engagement. Uh, but at the end of the day, most of the things we do are custom made. So we use our in-house tools to build projects for customers where they own the outcome, the, the product or the service is theirs and it's theirs only. That means that we have one part of our business model, which is about providing development, consulting and non-recurring uh, engineering services. And one pitch, which is which is software sales and software engineering. So we don't have a, a price sheet, which is predefined and we say this type of project is this much. It really depends on what the scope of the project is. What I will say is that we have the capability to go after very complex uh, problems. And I, I see I see Danny with a question here, uh, if we are a Japanese company and, and clients outside of Japan. Yes, so, so Hackerus is uh, headquartered in, in Kyoto, uh, but we have now locations across Kobe and Tokyo as well. Um, we also have a development center in Manila in the Philippines. Uh, right now, most of our clients are here in Japan, uh, but we do have some customers in uh, Germany. Uh, these include companies like Bayer and Boring at Ingeheim on the medical side. Uh, and quite recently, Deutsche Bahn, the, the German national railroad company. Uh, for the people that are, are more familiar with the French speaking world, uh, we're also working together with the Thales Group out of Canada through the AI at Centec uh, program. Do you have someone based in like Germany or Canada? We do not. I stay up late. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I in, in, in my team, I, I have some people that are looking in North America and some people that are looking at Europe. And uh, we just work European hours from or American hours from, from Asia. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a world where we wouldn't have the corona situation, it, we would probably have opened something this year, but uh, corona has really made things uh, a bit challenging, but I think everyone has that experience. Hmm. So you can work remotely with even European customers or American customers? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think in, in this day and age, uh, most of the, the work that we do is, is all about uh, uh, kind of development, and that's data can can fly through a cloud with without too much hurdles. Good. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Andrew, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, introduction and uh, the question answers as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let me welcome the next staff from Tokyo as well. Uh, they are Spider Labs. Satoko, welcome. Hi, you are with us now. Hi, Satoko. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Just a moment. I should. Uh, is it? Oh, you can introduce yourself, and we will play the video for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All okay. right. Mm. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, hello. My name is Satoko, and the CEO of Spider Labs. Today, I would like to present just three things. The first of all. Uh, what is the other problem? Probably most of people doesn't know what it is, so I would like to present it first. And second, there is about our service, Spider App, and uh, how it work, and also how it growing and getting successful. And the third thing is uh, our vision itself. Actually, it is really important since uh, one of our competitors, uh, raised, the CEO is wasted because he did <laughs> fraudulently things. So it is, it is very important for us. All right, thank you. <laughs> so let's watch your picture video. Yes. Bruno, please, thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm the CEO of Spider Labs. I am a female entrepreneur and was Okay, I think we have a small the Orange Fab Tokyo. I am Satoko and the CEO of Spider Labs. I am a female entrepreneur and was selected last uh, Orange Fab Tokyo last year. Spider Labs is a cybersecurity company based in Tokyo and Lisbon. And we protect digital advertisement budget from fraudulent users with our vision, which is building a safer and happier future with automation. I am really happy to meet everyone here from Taipei, especially we had a Taiwanese customer, the name is 70 Life. Yes, I am very excited to present our service here today. Let me give you an introduction to ad fraud. The business model of digital advertisement is based on how many times people click on advertisement, but malicious actors will abuse it to steal ad revenue. This is ad fraud. And $23 billion was wasted due to ad fraud last year. Our service, Spider App, is a cybersecurity tool for digital advertisement, which will solve this problem with automation and protect your ads. Bank of Innovation is one of our customers, and they are a gaming company who had a monthly budget of half million dollars but for digital advertisement. But 30% of it was wasted due to ad fraud. By using SpiderF, they reduced their monthly budget to $300,000, but still, they are getting the same amount of new users every month. For every dollar spent on SpiderF, they saved more than $50. As you can see the graph, we are constantly growing our MRR and the numbers of customers as well. Not only Taiwanese customers, we also have Taiwanese investors from CZ fundraising. That's also why I am interested in this market. We started this company in April 2011. 
Then we launched our several services, but everything failed because of many reasons. Looking back, I think we have learned many things from these uh, failed experiences. Therefore, we could launch our Spider F, which has many customers and uh, also successful service. It has been nine years since we started this company and uh, most of our members started to have uh, some family or the think about future or environment seriously. To be honest, just for money, we can do any kind of fraudulent things because <laughs> that's exactly what we are researching every day. But um, for our kids, we would like to build a better future with our technology. That's our vision. Since we were selected to last uh, Orange Fab Tokyo, we had so many big changes everywhere, like um, COVID-19, quarantine, and very bad economy, which nobody expected. Therefore, we really needed to change our sales and marketing strategies and uh, even product as well, as you may have done as well. However, we raised our MRR two times bigger in this situation. And uh, also, I could raise my third baby as well. Today, I am here to build mutually beneficial business partnership with our service. And also, I have a plan to do CSB fundraising next year. So if you have interest in it, I am very open for both of opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, though I know you must be very busy for your business, but please do take care good of yourself and your baby, all right? Okay, Satoko. All right, so we expect the questions from audience and uh, Hiroshi or, or Danny. Maybe Danny's question. How you how you resolve ad fraud issue? Could you share your technological enablers? Oh, you are mute. Sadako, yeah, you have to unmute your microphone. Unmute it. Do you see the, the icon in front of you? Yes. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. okay. Uh, you asked about how we are detect, uh, dealing with ad fraud with our service, right? Yeah. And uh, our, our service will apply to our customers to put our JavaScript tag in their platform, uh, in the landing page or conversion page or whatever they want to track. And also, we will ask them to integrate with their Google, or Facebook, Yahoo, or any kind of platforms. And um, by putting JavaScript tag in the website, we can collect any kind of data, which kind of user is coming and how their browser entry things. And we will analytics, analyze this information. And we will block every uh, to from every uh, from such a uh, digital advertisement platform via API. So technically, uh, all paths, all operation will be automated automatically so you don't need to worry about what you need to do for operation people okay do you have uh, any competitors in japan and also a uh, global market uh in, to be honest in the globally a lot lot of competitors and uh, to be honest recently many competitors attacking us and uh, it's very dangerous uh, i'm so sorry uh, it's really very bad, but yes, we have many competitors globally. And uh, in Japan, to be honest, we don't have that much Japanese competitor, but most of the foreigners competitor is coming to Japan this year and uh, next year. Okay, you, you want to go out for the global market, right? Definitely, yes. <laughs> how do you compete with those a lot of uh, competitors? 
globally? In global, it's a good question. Um, right now, we are very successful in Japanese market, and um, now we are trying to uh, make service to sell. Uh, now we are trying to sell service to United States and some com Asian company, a country like Korea or Taiwan. And uh, how we are dealing with it is uh, most of our com competitor is uh, not that much automatically. I mean. Most of the company is doing giving more consulting style and very expensive, but uh, our service is we are focusing on uh, uh, automation, so we don't need to ask that much money compared to such a competitors. So this is uh, our uh, positive point for these people: the automation and the price. Mm -hmm. Good. Maybe it's time. There is some question from the, the chat. Oh, great. Okay. From which category, country, or type have you seen the greatest growth recently in AG fraud? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, would you mind to say that again? From which Maybe category? You can, uh, yeah, chat. Will, yeah, you yeah. Right. Okay, oh, let's go right. to the next. In the chat, you can see the question is like from which category, country, or type? Have you seen the greatest growth recently in AD fraud? Most growing market. What is the grow most growing category? Uh, the growing market in Japan or category? Uh, the category, country or type of uh, maybe advertisers? So most of our competitors is we will say the most growing country should be Japan because of many reasons. Because of probably because of quarantine, uh, Japanese market was not that much bad compared to United States or European countries. So that maybe probably that's why most of our competitors coming to Japanese market this year. And uh, for categories. Recently, we find many fraud in Google. Facebook is doesn't have that much, but Google has a lot, especially in a mobile app, app in in app apps. And should I say such a thing? Uh, is there anybody who is from Google us? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I answer. Uh, Google is a very nice uh, inventory. Um, <laughs> All right, okay. So I saw other questions still, yeah, raised up, but we run out of time. So I would just encourage you, our audience, you still can chat with the staff in a late time during the booth exhibition period. Okay, so let's uh, uh, welcome next staff. Thanks to Satoko. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, so the next staff, Citronix uh, from Seoul. So welcome, uh, Butio, welcome. Beauty, are you with us? Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. Hello. Can you introduce yourself to the Hello. audience? Yeah. Hello. My name is Kerto Pa. I am Citronix CEO. Um, our business area is autonomous ship and smart port using AI technology. Um, enjoy my presentation. <laughs> Okay, Bruno, please um, play back their picture video. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Park, Citronix CEO. We develop AI based versing monitoring system. Versing means parking a ship at the port. A ship is huge and complicated system that is a few thousand bigger than a car. Therefore, invisible area occurs and controlling the ship is very difficult. So the bursting process requires a high level skills. As you can see, when the ship approaches the port, there are a serious accident. First movie clip is about Yos port at 2014. Second movie clip is about Busan port at this year. If the ship crashed the port, the amount of damages is quite large. 
This risk is taken by a port operating company and ship owner. Also, there are many minor collisions. It cannot destroy the port, but it can gradually destroy the vendors on the dock. Therefore, port operating company or port authority must fix the vendors more often by minor collisions. We want to solve this problem. Bursting process only depends on the pilot's eye and sense. There are not available sensors to help them. They just believe the voice coming from the walkie-talkie. To solve this problem, we develop AI-based bursting monitoring system. This system provides useful information, such as around the images, distance between the ship and port, relative velocity between the ship and port, and distance between the ship and obstacles. Our system is operated by AI vision technology that can automatically classify ship, land, port, and sea. It works regardless of the size or type of ship. Therefore, there are no construction, no expensive sensors. To simplify this system, our sensor module is installed at the port side. Users, such as pilot or captain, can see this service using their smartphone, iPad. So we need wireless communication like 5G or LTE for AI vision data. This movie, this movie clip is our service view. Uh, we already service at Ulsan and Yost port in Korea, and we use LT networks. There are some problems. Port is secure place, and bursting process is urgent. Therefore, we need the wireless networks that has security, stability, and minimum time delay. We think the best solution is 5G networks. To make innovative product, our team consists of experts in various fields, such as AI, data, hardware, software, and designer. Especially the AI field researchers are made up of PhD degrees. Only in Korea, 200,000 ships come in and go out annually. We hope to make AI-based port monitoring system with orang 5 networks for port around the world. We will lead AI platform for port-to-port -port industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your pitch video. All right, so welcome questions to Mr. Park. So the first question would be, what, where is your target country for your global market approach? Mm. You need to unmute your microphone, sorry. Please. Hello? Yep. Yes. We want to go to Singapore and Netherlands. Do you have any ongoing projects already? outside of Korea? No, no, only in Korea. Okay. You are discussing with any other country? Yeah, we, we, we discussed about the Singapore port. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. Last okay. year, we met the uh, PSA uh, employee. Mm -hmm. Next question will be, um, how do you decide the price? Um, uh, up on the one one pier, uh, they there is one set of our product. Our product one price the price of our product is uh, one hundred thousand dollars. One hundred thousand dollar per one pier. Yeah, it's a monthly fee or the one one shot. One one pay only one pay. Not okay. So you don't have recurring revenue. Um, sorry, recurring. So the if you, you know, if the customer pay once, you you don't get revenue after that. Um, we uh we we will gather the uh, uh after service fee. 
mm-hmm. uh, at annually. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Okay. 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 So, I saw all the questions. Well. Where is your competitive advantage? Uh, sorry. Competitive advantage. Advantage. Yeah. Um, we use AI technology. So um, if customer using our product, uh, uh, a legal regardless of uh, type of ship, uh, they they analysis. The, the velocity and speed about the ship. So uh, uh, it's cheaper than you know. Ah, yeah. yeah. Um, manual, manual way. Other product use the uh, expensive laser sensors, but mm-hmm. now we use the uh, vision sensors uh, using AI data, AI technology. So. Uh, our product is cheaper than uh, other product. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Park. Mm-hmm. Let's see John next team. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let me welcome the next team. Also comes from South Korea as well. Hi, Paul. Are you with us? Wait. Uh, he's not right. Here. He's not right here. No, it's just okay. It's here now. Great. Hi, Paul. Hello. You're wearing a mask in public place, I guess. So, hello. Can you introduce yourself to audience? Sure. Uh, hi. My name is Paul Kwan. Uh, I'm in charge of overseas operations for Safer. Uh, glad to be part of today, uh, demo day as a season 11 member. And actually, I'm uh, at a construction expo here in Korea, uh, which is our first oh. offline exhibition in a very long time. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I guess uh, also looking forward to the day that we can all meet face to face once again. And on that yeah, note, can we challenge. start the teach, please? Yeah, this does challenge it challenges everyone. Okay. But I think that that's why we host such the event and then the networking could be easier. Uh, okay. All right. So let's start to watch your picture video. Bruno, please. Hi, my name is Paul from Safeware. Safeware is a safety tech company that provides wearable airbag system for human protection. We were established in late 2016 and based out of South Korea. There are 12 professionals working hard to make this world a safer place. So falling is the number one cause of the industry accidents. In the UK, 47% of industrial fatalities were because of falling this past year. The International Labor Organization suggests that 2.3 million workers around the world come to work-related accidents every year. And this estimates over 6,000 deaths every single day. It's also a tremendous amount of economic loss for the government, companies, and individuals. And despite these numbers, we saw the lack of active protection measures and decided to make a solution. The wearable airbag for industry professionals, later named C1, C for construction. C1 is designed to protect workers working at height. We designed it specifically protect crucial parts where full recovery is nearly impossible once gets damaged. C1 inflates within 0.2 seconds from the moment of falling and absorbs nearly 60% of the fall impact away from the worker. The number 60% means worker's life being saved and change in the type of an accident, such as heavy injury to minor fracture and so on. We're selected as a member of Orange Fab Asia 
season 11 in September last year. It's been a long roller coaster ride, especially under the current circumstances. But Safer marched on, and we wanted to share what's been going on with us since we joined the Orange Fab community. So we have launched our first product, C1, in December last year and sold over 3,000 airbags until today. We also gave it an update too. The improved version of the airbag that's being sold right now has a design update, which won us good design certificate. It also provides more protection coverage throughout the body and battery life improved by 400% with the updated algorithms. We also developed our motorbike airbag vest this year. We had completely redesigned our motorbike vest from the initial prototype and are looking to launch sometime next year. We have established connections with some major distributors in France as well. We're currently working on prototypes for different market needs too, and further developing our enterprise safety monitoring platform connected with our airbags. We're also busy attending overseas exhibitions, well, until the pandemic era hits this year, and got accepted into global acceleration programs from Austria and France. Build partnerships and business opportunity discussions with global companies. And last not but least, one of the next stars at CES this year, which is given to the top three startups with innovative technology for the benefit of humanity by the international organization IEEE. We're looking forward to expand our market and the rest of the Europe next year and eventually drive as number one the brand as our main goal is. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see what questions we have here to Paul. Oh, how much is the, the bag? Uh, well, the airbag is about uh, 900 USD. 900 USD. So, uh, 900 USD. If you sell the product and uh, you don't have revenue after that. Correct. So you have to find the customers, you know, every year, every month. And uh, right, what right, do month. you think, what do you think about the market side? Probably it's not so cheap. So for some customers, construction company, maybe they can afford to pay the cost. What do you think? Right. Right. So. One of the things is that uh, we we are uh, currently finding ways to uh, lower the cost of the production so that we can uh, provide it with the uh, you know more affordable. But second thing is that it's still selling because uh, the value that it gives, for instance, in Korea, because there's uh, regulations and fine that you have to pay also insurance cost and the uh, uh, you know payment for the. Uh, basically compensation for the patients and workers and their family and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. and, and also if a person dies, if a worker dies at an ex, uh, at a construction site, uh, the person in charge has to go to jail. And, um, also, uh, they have to shut down the site for two to three months. I believe. Mm -hmm. So those things are some of the reasons that people still like the company still purchase, but we, yeah, mm -hmm. but, like I mentioned earlier, we're try still trying to find ways to co uh, cut cost. So you said that if the construction company use your product, they can reduce the insurance cost, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And uh, other question yeah. will be... Uh... We have a, a lot of questions from event panel, yeah. And... Um, what is the lifetime for the bag? How many years? Well, okay. So the bag is, uh, if if it was used, so let's say if there's an accident, uh, then they would send that airbag to, to us to have it inspected professionally uh, to make sure that everything's fine. But mm -hmm. there's also, so let's say uh, if 
um, the bag was used once, it's reusable with uh, replaceable parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, among the parts, there's a uh, CO2 gas cartridges and they are, um, they would last uh, five years without, uh, if there's no accident, but we okay. give our customers a uh, inspection, visual inspection of every year. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't yeah. have too much time, but I just so would like to ask the last question. This is the question from China. Um, very interesting part that they say in terms of CSR tech, okay? So what industries do you primarily address? What industry do I currently the like? Primary what, what address? Yes, oh, um, industry application. Yeah. So right now, construction, uh, a lot of construction companies, and also maintenance uh, and cleaning, such as like building uh, maintenance, elevator, uh, anything, you know, window cleaning, uh, those companies. And uh, we just actually um, had a deal with. Um, uh, I guess it's a B2G, but it's also construction, uh, housing, housing, and so on. And also, um, actually, schools because they also, mm -hmm. you know, to replace the light bulb and so on, and and uh, some like farming industry as well okay. to work on trees. Thank you. So, okay, thank we you. got it. Thank you. Thanks to Paul. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's welcome the next stop. I work place from Hong Kong. Shen Wei, are you with us? Hello. We have a small problem. I saw the next stop actually just stand by a moment ago. But we yeah, he's, yeah. Maybe uh, we manage to let the next stop to pitch you first. Bruno, is that okay? okay? Sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, and then invite. Yeah, I will please come back. All right, so then allow me to introduce the next stop, Survey Cake from Taipei. Welcome, Jerry. Hi. Hi, Hi Jerry. So we have the both startups uh, career. Okay. In the same time, right, sorry. So J Jerry, just can you come back? Yeah, Jerry, we will ask you to come back. That's uh, manage. Yeah, I work first team. Okay, sure. First. All right. So we'll meet you later on. All right. So go back to I work place team from Hong Kong. Hi. Shen Wei, Hi. are you with us? Yes, okay. Can you introduce yes. yourself to the audience? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Shen Wei from Singapore. And I'm the from Singapore, founder. okay, sorry. Mm. I'm the founder of I Workplace. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, not very well. Maybe you need, can you take a, like, okay. we cannot hear you well with the mask, sure. but. Hi, uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's better. Okay, That's thank better. you. So thanks, uh, Bruno Liping, for giving the opportunity to present at the Orange Fab Demo Day. Uh, this is Xiong Wei, and I I come from Singapore, and I work place is an uh, uh, energy incentivization startup that provides uh, incentives for companies uh, and help them to lower their costs at the same time during infrastructure procurement. Yeah. So a brief background about myself. I do uh, UI UX design. Uh, and do rapid prototyping for uh, early stage startups and I also do uh, 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 IoT projects in my free time. So I also uh, specialize in engineering as well. So yeah, that's... Uh, okay. Yeah. okay, thank you, Sean Wei. So let's watch your pitch video. Okay. I would like to introduce to you a book place. This place is the software as a service product where companies can use a book place to lower their costs and control and optimize the energy infrastructure, in turn, helping them to lower their costs and providing them with energy incentives. So, what is the problem? 
the problem in the modern day is that global energy data markets are ever changing. There is no easy way to analyze the energy markets because there are high levels of uncertainty and cost is a very important factor for investors and companies to manage their infrastructure. So we will aim to provide a software as a service product where companies and agencies can manage their infrastructure all on our platform. And we aim to help them save money in the process where profits are prioritized over loss and sustainability can be achieved through our EcoVision. So how does it work? We aim to use live data algorithms and cost saving strategies to help companies save during their procurement process. And we also aim to use real-time data tracking tools to help companies better decide on their infrastructure choices. And also, I would place X as a microservice for existing data management platforms. So about us, we aim to provide a one-stop analysis on energy infrastructure and its consumption. And we aim to build an ecosystem of energy services in turn lowering costs for businesses. So the market validation is in the next five years of 78 trillion US dollars on global infrastructure and also 1 trillion targeted growth on big companies with green infrastructure. So we aim to target a serviceable available market of 800 million US dollars. Let's start with the total available market, which is 1.9 billion US dollars on green infrastructure based on the next five year projection of the global total available market. And we also have, I would place in the possible markets such as IoT and AI systems, whereby the next five years, there will be a pot potential market share on 20.6 million US dollars. So we aim to provide value proposition of an integrated data management platform where all existing data management platforms can be found on our website where investors and companies do not have to repeatedly scroll through every single international data markets to be able to get their insights. And we also aim to use an uh, internet of things um, functionality such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and cloud uh, functions to enable real-time collection of data to help investors decide better. And at the same time, we would act as a microservice for the data management platforms whereby they are able to tap into the resources that we have. So as a product, we will first let users be able to search by a city of their choice and review their infrastructure costs and ultimately make transactions on our platform. So we will use uh, machine learning models and analytics to help the users make better decisions along the way. And where would it happen? All the sensors uh, using Internet of Things will be installed in all these critical areas. And ideally, uh, we would aim to achieve uh, better statistics and data using the figures collected. We will aim to optimize uh, better, with better results. And commercial facilities are one of our main targets. So we aim to use a B2C and B2B model whereby we will use our business model concept as a cash bank incentive model whereby corporations cooperate with us through our data management services and allow um, better distribution of uh, optimization of infrastructure on our platform. One example would be to search by the city and analyze the data based on the location and infrastructure. So we are the first to market and we will also enable cost incentives and we integrate all the data management platform data into one and they can instantly get their information from there. And this tool is definitely the first, which is allows companies to source and procure the international. So thank you, everyone. Okay, so thank you. Now we know that your company provides uh, the energy and the environmental optimization solutions. So let's uh, hear the questions from the audiences or from our colleagues. Uh, there's no question from audience. So, uh, okay. uh, how actually 
your customers can reduce the cost of energy, do you use any kind of uh, automatic controlling system or you just provide the data and the customers will decide how to reduce the cost? You need to unmute your microphone, sorry. Hi. Yes, uh, Hiroshi-san. I just respond to your question. Um, for customers to to build their infrastructure, a pre-construction of their infrastructure, there will already be figures that uh, typically developers or the customer themselves will get to see on how they can build their infrastructure on. So typically, uh, ele electricity facilities and um, all the facilities included will be classified under asset management, whereby you can uh, give a rough estimation on the reports based on the past year reports that you can get to estimate how much would the cost amount up to in the facility management uh, aspect. So what we are doing is we are doing uh, the pre-procurement uh, cycle, whereby we help them to uh, predict the in advance of the cost that they're going to spend and compare it against the figures. Uh, of course, we compare it with past figures and also we compare it with uh, potential future figures. And on top of the report that you mentioned, definitely we have the report. And with the report, we we will use a, a algorithm that compares uh, against the, the revenue generated, the possibility re revenue, the cap X, which is the expenditure of the, the potential expenditure of the facilities, the many maintenance costs, uh, various aspects of it will be automatically uh, generated from uh, this algorithm. So so you, your service will be used before building new infrastructures or yeah. something? Okay, right. okay, understood. Uh, do you plan to work with architects or construction companies? you may integrate your solution in the design and the building phase that's a question from audience yeah, yeah our audience. we do plan to work with uh, architects or construction companies but preferably we we will work on a business to business model which is as i have just mentioned is a business to business model you work with companies that are interested in developing the infrastructure no matter construction companies or, or possibly uh, private developers that are looking to uh, expand their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. so thank you. Thank you, Shen Wei. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, so let's welcome Survey Cake coming back. So welcome Jerry back. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, no problem, Jerry. Okay, hi, uh, I will introduce yeah. myself. And yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jerry from Survey Cakes. I'm Survey Cakes uh, BD manager now at 25 Sprout. And 25 Sprout is a software company which focuses on the latest internet technology and ser uh, cloud service in Taipei. And Bankery, uh, we have two B, uh, business units. One is for consulting about uh, web and app. And another business unit is our uh, SaaS product, uh, Survey Cake. So later the uh, video will be uh, an introduction about Survey Cake. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great more details from your picture video. Yes. Survey Cake is an enterprise SaaS product which helps you to create It's professional yet friendly survey easy. It's also very easy to remember. We want to make a survey a piece of cake, so we call it Survey Cake. In the past few years, we have worked with many leading companies in industry like HSBC, Toyota, and KPMG. Our mission to, is to build a powerful survey software. You can create a professional survey in minutes and get the real-time feedback much easier. From design, we provide over 20 questions, types, and 70 survey templates. You can manage the survey easily by drag and drop. After creating a survey, you can reach your customer easily by unique URL and QR code. And after they submit it, you will see all the results in dashboard and able to do a deeper analyze and figure out some great insight. We're running on premium business model. You can use it for free with limited feature and this $30 month for pro user. 
We also provide on-premise version, which enterprise can host their data by themselves, provide higher level of security and service. Moreover, use its own domain name and logo. And here's our traction. We have 500,000 users now, and more than 30,000 user, new users registered every month. And now we have more than 100 enterprise clients in annual contracts. The MOM of end user is 7%, which means we can double the revenue every year. So you might think survey is not that sexy. It's a very mature industry. Let alone there are many big players in the pool. So how are you different from Google Form and SurveyMonkey? As you can see, design, collect, and analyze the survey online. This is everyone, like Google Form, uh, SurveyMonkey, and SurveyCake. We can all do the same kind of things. But SurveyCake, as an enterprise product, we focus as what next after the survey. We will collect a lot of data, but what's really important for the enterprise is how we can use this data to achieve their business goal, which generally higher revenue and more happy customers. So various action can be triggered based on the answer from each of the customers. It's in real time and super responsive. We want to do is to maximize the value for each answer you collect. So here's the successful cases. Uh, one Prime Group is one of the leading restaurant chain in Taiwan. After a meal, you will receive a receipt with QR code to encourage you to do a survey. So yes, using QR code to do a survey could be convenient. However, it doesn't solve their pain, most painful point. So what's their pain, pain, pain point? They receive a lot of fake data. Imagine this, the next time you fill out the survey, when you ask to leave your mobile phone number, normally you will leave it blank. However, since the restaurant customers are mostly passed by, your contact information is really important for business owner, so they can reach you and have more engagement. So how we solve this problem? Uh, when you now enter the survey, decide the general question. In the end, we will ask you to leave your phone number and we will send you a text message with a coupon which you can use immediately. Therefore, you will have to input your real phone number so you can receive the message and get the coupon. Then redeem the coupon to get your incentive, which will be a cup of coffee for free. By doing this, we can tell our customers that each copy you give away to present a valid phone number you just verified 15 minutes ago. So we solve their pain point. And this kind of after survey behavior, we call it automation. We have more than hundreds of automation for different scenario and industry, which based on client's business purpose and directly involved with their operations. Since we start to change the way of selling survey kit as a solution, we have simply a product. We shorten the sales cycle and increase the transaction rate. And nearly half of the clients purchase automation. Retention rate is the most important index for SaaS product. In general, our retention is 85%. But for clients who have purchased automation, the retention rate is 100%. So it's proved the success of this business model. After all, I want to share a quote. Focus on the things don't change in your business. So yes, survey is not like AI, blockchain. It's not a sexy subject, but it's a don't change subject. Customers are always welcome to give their feedback as easy as possible, and the business owner wants to get the insight from the feedback and help them to build a successful business. It's the same from 20 years ago to 20 years later, and this is what we want to do the best. We are Survey Cake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your pitch video. Thank you. All right, so we work on a question as well to Jerry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm interested in the automation parts. Um, yeah. You uh, introduced the one sample, but uh, what kind of uh, other you know automation you have? Because probably it depends on the customers that they have a very different types of needs for automation, right? So, do you have to make the, their you know request based on their request? Do you have to make a new solution every time, or you have a very popular automation solution? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, there will be an automation module so that uh, different company, if they have the same needs, uh, we can like uh, get online it as soon as possible. But uh, most of the company we uh, like partner with uh, because they want to daily integrate the service with their system. So mostly our another business units that's doing the web and app 
are able to like deeply integrate the service and their system. So you have a kind of system integration work for each customer. Um, yes, mo most most of it because uh, they don't want to change their old system, but they want to use the new survey tools for their customers. Mm -hmm. How how what is your pricing model? How do you decide the price? Oh yeah, uh, we're now running in the freemium business, so uh, you can register for free with limited feature and thirty dollars mm -hmm. uh, per month for advanced feature. And but for uh, the enterprise user, uh, is for annual contract that is for uh, ten thousands for uh, each uh, customer min minimum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so for uh, yeah, automation part you have uh, you know each time you have a different project and cost. Oh yes, yeah. yes, this is uh, like uh, an RE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Jerry, to answer the questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so All right. let's welcome the last stop for uh, today, the team found tech from Taipei also. Hello, Daphne, are you with us? Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi Brian and uh, Hi. Daphne. Yeah. Hi. Hello. hello. Can you introduce you both? Yes. To the audience. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name. Hello. I think they have Hello, a small Jersey. network okay. issue. Okay. Let's wait. Yeah, that, hopefully, this is more problem could be resolved soon. Yeah, I hope that we'll no more connectivity. Maybe we can go to video first, maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, for the re for the issues concerned, so we'll just go for the video playback first. Okay. So let's watch the picture video. Employees tend to use their personal social messengers to contact with customers. In this case, businesses cannot retain their chat logs. Also, employees may have to reply to messages even if they are not at work. Also, there are too many customer interaction channels. You can find businesses using Facebook, Instagram, Line, etc. simultaneously. And this may require them more efforts to maintain all of the channels. Third of all, it's not easy for customers to reach out to businesses. Customers may have to sign up or download an app in advance before they can connect with businesses. To solve these problems, some of you may want to try a chat API to build your own chat. However, chat API may require you more maintenance costs and engineer fees. Others may want to use a live chat solution. However, you will need a website or app to do so. Even if you have one, you will still need engineers to help integrate live chat with your service. So here comes our solution, WeChat. WeChat allows customers to connect easily with a QR code and link. Customers won't need to sign up or download any app. You will only need three steps before you start chatting. We want you to connect with customers easily. That's why customers won't have to sign up or download any app in advance. Also, with PinChat, you will not be restricted to any local social messengers such as Line, WeChat, Kakao Talk, etc. PinChat can also be used in both online and offline use cases. Let's show you some of the use cases. One of them is used in advertisement. Others can be used in flyers, packages, your business card, your invitation for events, also in SMS messages, social media, 
and also in online events. In all of these use cases, you can simply use our Pinchai QR code in a link to connect with customers. So how can you start? You only need four steps. First, just sign up on our website. Then after you sign up, enter our backstage and you can create a chat link by yourself. Then share this chat link and its QR code to your customers. Click on the chat button and then you can enter the chat room and view all of the chat rooms. In the chat room, you, do, you can just start interacting with your customers. If you want to reply to messages more efficiently, we also provide an app for you to do so. With our app, you can view all the chat rooms in the chat section. In the code section, you can edit or share your QR code to your customers. We provide a tier subscription plan for individuals and for larger enterprises. Our users are from all around the Asia Pacific area, and we're also preparing to expand our businesses to other places in the world. Want to know more about PinChat? Here's our QR code. Let's chat. Okay, so yeah. that's uh, the pitch video from okay. the Pinchet Solution, okay? Contact team. All right, so any questions to Brian and uh, Daphne? So <clears throat> um, you said that you have a lot of customers in many countries. How, how did you get those customers? Can you explain about your sales and marketing strategy? Uh, mostly we gain our customers from online market, uh, online advertisements. So mm -hmm. um, when they click through the advertisement and then we can talk to them, then they can um, chat with us directly with the pin chat link on our website. And then mm -hmm. they can try to sign up. And then if they have any questions, they can uh, talk to us and give us some feedback immediately. Mm -hmm. So how many percentage of your customers are paying customers? Um, right now, it's about 100%. Yeah. No, 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 no. You have a free version, right? We are starting to gain uh, more organic users because they can try it. They can find us on uh, by clicking uh, um, by searching for chat, and then we will come up, <laughs> and they will take and click through. So uh, yeah, we have a question from audience. Yes. In what different touch points of the customer journey does your customer use your app today? Well. Um, Mostly customers use our app to as a first connection with their customers because our mm -hmm. customers are mostly businesses. And when they want to reach out to customers, they don't know how. And customers may not know how to reach out to businesses. So businesses usually use our that link and then put on the advertisement or their flyers or on their website. And then customers, uh, when they have something to ask, or maybe they want to know more about this product, they can just uh, click on our link or scan our QR code, and then they can start a connection with yeah. business. Yeah, they can start a connection uh, without adding uh, adding each other as a friend or draw an app. So uh, it can start a quick chat, uh, quick chat uh, just in time. Yeah. Yes, and they usually use pin chat as a way to uh, as a first interaction, and if they want to maybe purchase, they can yeah. they can do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which which is more popular, online or offline? Right now, um, Offline, yeah. yeah, yeah. We think maybe offline would be more popular. Offline, so as you said, yeah. like uh, advertisement or flyer or those uh, physical things, papers. Yeah, okay. uh, 
Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. unlike Vine or uh, unlike a Slack, so we more focus on the market uh, B2C. So um, there are most of, uh, there are a lot of uh, staff or managers use their private messenger to uh, connect to their customers. So we wanted to create a new way to um, that the, the, the staff uh, to connect with the users without use, using their private messenger and the company also know uh, what they talk, what, they, uh, what are the discussions, to you know, or to improve the uh, user engagement or improve the experience. Yeah, so feature is a new way to connect to customers. Yeah. Okay. And, um, All right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, yes. Yeah. Uh, because offline. You want to say more words? Yes, go ahead. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> online advertisement, you usually can get enough engagement. So that's why they tend to use, they like to use a QR code to put on the flyers. So when customer, customers have any questions, they can, and they see the flyer, they can just scan and then ask, uh, ask questions. Yeah. Like For this, example, like, like that. Put on this. Flyer, right. Yeah, you can scan this and then interact yeah. with the Yes. We'll help you to do that, yeah, in a later time. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for Found Tech team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now we're finishing. And then all of our staff respect to meet our audience at their booth. If you look at the left hand side uh, of your screen, you will see Aspo, this icon over there. So that's where the place our staff would like to meet you over there. Please go there and meet up our staff over there at their booth. And then after the event, if you still want to continue to chat with our staff, as you could see from the screen, well, you actually can scan their pin chat QR code, as you can see now from the screen, and then chat with them privately. Or if you do want to chat with each staff privately, you can use now as well. And please, very welcome you to visit our staff at their booth. As said, please leave this stage and then go to visit ASPO, their booth. All right. Um, I hope you can enjoy the networking time and the event will last until 5 o'clock p.m. Taipei time. Thank you so much for your for participation to this event. And then we'll have a next online Fab Asia Demo Day hosted by Fab Tokyo in November timeframe. So look forward to meeting you all online again soon. See you. Goodbye.